Hi, good morning, good day, or to, good evening to you. Welcome to Red Strike stream number 13. And that's an interesting coincidence because today we will talk about uh, Facebook. Facebook Pixel, Facebook Conversion API, and sending conversion back to Facebook. And again, like we always do on streams, we will mostly talk about all the questions that you, our viewers or users of Red Track, has asked uh, since last stream we did about uh, third party cookies. So today we'll focus on Facebook, its pixel, uh, conversion tracking API, and what is happening right now. A lot of small changes, some of them are noticeable. Everyone knows about them, some of them not are going on right now. We'll cover them and I would like to thank you everybody for the opportunity because this week we have to uh, dive deep into all the new requirements, all the changes that were not exactly relevant to what we do and we found some small but important gems that we'll also share today. So, as usual, uh, please write down if you can hear me well, if you like the topic, uh, hit plus, uh, like, whatever you want so that we know uh, it makes sense and we'll keep doing those streams. And meanwhile, we proceed to the core part, talking about Facebook pixels, conversion API and postbacks to Facebook. So going on the big screen, even bigger, like this. So, um, yeah, and actually, let's do this one. So, Facebook. Why is uh, so much uh, talk about Facebook? Because technically it was initiated, sort of, everybody connects it to iOS 14 privacy update, but in our opinion, that's not so. If somebody watches over the uh, traditional digital press like Wired, uh, they started to write about Google Privacy Sandbox and all the changes it brings. And in my opinion, this is the real change behind uh, the tracking attribution with Facebook, behind the pixel requirements, behind the event requirements, and they are adapting to the world without pixels, third-party cookies, digital fingerprints, and other stuff. So, what are those biggest attribution updates that everybody is talking about? Number one, seven-day uh, click attribution window. Verified domains and only eight conversion events per verified domain. And what is more important, and that is very not noticeable, this is event priority. It's like Facebook says that if your event is not top priority, they don't promise it will be attributed or all events will be counted. Now the attribution will work only for top priority events out of those eight. And of course, like we said, new domain requirements, verified domain, and that's probably okay for most of media buys except affiliates who used to have their pixels on the advertiser's website, reliably collecting data, making all the optimization. And you see more and often, Facebook says, use conversion API. So, biggest changes in attribution. Seven day attribution window, it means significant loss of optimization data for you. And there is nothing anybody can do because now Facebook says, okay, if any conversion happened outside of those seven days, boom, not part of attribution, we won't record it, we won't use it to train our models. And if your sales cycle is very short, good for you, but if your customers make this more than seven days, it means that you will not have as good data as you used to have with 28 days of attribution. Your data sets will be way smaller anyway, but for some of you, you will miss the data and you'll have other ways to optimize Facebook campaigns. Again, eight conversion events per domain is probably okay in most cases, but the trick is event priority. Something they don't push actively like they push those eight events, but you can find it in the small print that you need to set up not only those eight events, 
but you also want to check the priority that Facebook gave to those events and set up your own if you don't agree with something Facebook did by default. Because, as Facebook says in their uh, documents, that uh, they do not guarantee that your low priority events will be uh, recorded and properly attributed towards all the results. Like they will focus on what is important to you because that's what important is your top priority. So these are very significant changes on attribution and probably they will start influencing the results of all media buyers across Facebook. So sadly, uh, not much you can do. We all have, like we talked last time, we all have to adapt, learn new tricks and uh, be ready for all the challenges that technology throws at us. In this case, in the face of Facebook, Google, Apple, and maybe somebody else. So that's why conversion API is getting more and more essential. Because this on the screen is the copy from the Facebook. He says that Facebook advertising tool rely on custom information sent from your website. And they assume that Pixel will be sending less and less relevant information about customer actions on your website. So you need other tools to collect and send this data through Conversion API. So they call it very simple. Features that rely on this information are more susceptible to performance degradation due to signal loss. Let me tell you in simple words. If pixels are starting to get blocked, Facebook would not receive all the data it needs to receive to do optimization to train their machines, and their algorithm will work even worse to what's happening right now. So not only your attribution window will be shorter, and you'll miss some of the data because of this, but the quality of data you will fit to attribution model will also be impacted by pixel. And so Facebook says, until it's not too late, please move to conversion API. But again, honestly, it's not only about conversion, it's just about all cross-site tracking that is based on pixels, digital fingerprints, and other cross-site tracking technologies that we mentioned on our last stream. So, two options that you have right now. And like I said, this is on the left, Facebook Pixel. This is probably be relevant next six to nine months and then it will be shut down like all the other pixels unless they invent something out of the blue. But seeing the huge emphasis they make on Conversion API, they think that Conversion API is a way to go. So the differences were simple. They both collect data. One sits on your web pages, usually put it through Google Analytics. Uh, some data is collected based on your setup. Some data Facebook collects itself and probably don't even know what. Then Conversion API, it works from your backend and you actually have to have your own tools to collect all the data that you want to collect and then send it back to Facebook. So some probably compliance requirements, a lot of technological challenges, but you still have time to solve it, whether your own, with reliable technology partners, or with tools like RedTrack. So, speaking about uh, Facebook pixels and uh, what data they use to collect themselves, because now they cannot do it, and they ask you as the customer to collect all this data and send it to them via Conversion API. So let's compare uh, Google or Bing because they were simple and straightforward and Facebook. For Google, you need to give click ID because that's how you identify basically click that converted like with any other traffic source, then conversion event, conversion time and conversion amount. Currency, of course, and some uh, time zone, some regular technical stuff, but that's it. Now, with Facebook, they require you or us as a technology provider in this case, to also send you user agent. That's uh, the core for building fingerprints, by the way. And it also will be depreciated by all the Google Privacy Sandbox changes. It will stop being that unique as it is right now. Action source, that's uh, basically either it's 
chat, app, website, offline conversion, stuff like this, and event source URL that is required for online, not app, but just online conversions. And that's how they probably will see if the domain verified is the same domain as sent, sent conversions. But now you control the backend and you can send it uh, that this event source is your landing page source and probably work, working around that some of the limitations of the Facebook with uh, domain verification that is essential for affiliate markets. So, um, by the way, any questions so far? Like something you or you have heard today? Have anybody heard about this event priority stuff for Facebook Pixel? Because it was a big surprise for me to find it when I was preparing for the stream. Who knew about the event priority? That not all events will be tracked and attributed just Type in comments. I'm curious to see if uh, it's really something hidden we found or it just was a common knowledge but nobody was talking about. And meanwhile, while you type, let's move on to the next part. What would be the benefits of switching from Pixel to Conversion API? Because you still have to do it and you probably want to do it sooner than later. But first, it can complement Pixel. All the events you collect with the pixel can stay, remain and work, and you start to send the same events or additional ones via Conversion API. And done right, Facebook will do event deduplication, so there will be no inflation of uh, conversions, of attribution, stuff like this. Now, as soon as you started to do Facebook Conversion API, you start to do online and offline conversion. Because now you collect all your data and then you push it back to Facebook, meaning that you are in control what conversion you send back to Facebook online. And for many of you can be offline conversions that happen somewhere in your CRM. And of course, since now you control the data you send to Facebook, because it's not collected by Pixel, you send it through the API. It may be a great solution for affiliates who have no access to thank you page, so need to somehow verify uh, that their pixels are called from the customer domain, which is close to being impossible. Now they can just say, okay, all these conversion, they happen on my landing page. I do verify this domain, that's fine. Yeah, those purchases, they also happen on my landing page. Because now you decide what event URLs you send to Facebook, you decide what event types you send to Facebook. And I'm not sure if it's common knowledge, but quite often we hear that Facebook gives different CPMs to different event types. So maybe you do purchases, but want to uh, report them as leads. Supposedly, uh, Facebook will give you lower CPMs. Wonderful. Now you have purchases, you call this event leads, send it to Facebook, give this my landing page, generates those leads, send it to Facebook, and get maximum profit from Facebook optimization algorithms. So, Pixel, good. Conversion API gives some additional benefits. Besides the fact it will be the only stuff working next year. So, three options to do it. Do it yourself. And that's great if you have all the technology in place, the team, uh, ability to collect, store data, wonderful. You can do it yourself. And they, Facebook provides quite a huge guide. We actually read it thoroughly to do it ourselves for our users. Now, we can work with a recommended partner. I checked the list. Just eight companies there for now. So not much. Or, in our opinion, for most of the uh, media buyers and marketers, you can also work with a tracker of your choice. As long as this ad tracker supports sending back conversions to Facebook via Conversion API. So, what are the benefits of using Ad Tracker? First, unlike Facebook and the reporting now with seven days, with Ad Tracker you can have long attribution window. Yes, it will not help you do better auto optimization, but at least you will help help you with better visibility into what actually works and converts. And of course, 
you have more conversion events, like most trackers can do more than eight. Maybe we need this, you can use this. And if you use a tracker, that means all the technology stuff, all the implementation, the compliance headache, it's part of the tracker. They need to be compliant. They need to have technology. They need to give you easy to implement solution. And probably not only buying data from Facebook, so you have all in one place. And best of all, uh, using ad trackers give you, or you can call it single source of truth, call it independent attribution. But now if you have 10 conversions, you have 10 conversions. Uh, whatever Facebook tells you you have eight, Google tells you you have also like six, totals way more than 10. But now in your ad tracker, there will be same 10 conversions and you'll have your own data with your own attribution model and your own attribution window about where those conversions are coming from. Of course, the tracker needs to be free of those limitations of using cross-site tracking technology. It should be based on the first-party data. It should support a Facebook conversion API, probably some other tools. But in essence, it's the easiest and fastest way to solve the post back to Facebook problem, the demise of the pixel problem, and at the same time gain quite a lot of additional um, benefits like automation. I mean, probably you can do affiliate tracking. You can manage your attribution across different models and campaigns. Of course, you have all the reporting that you can share with your team, with your customers, with your partners. So those are all additional benefits to just being able to send conversions back to Facebook. And this is it. Now, uh, since this is streamed by Red Track, so we are the tracker that can help you. Why? Because we track based on first party data, no third party cookies, no digital fingerprints. We provide you with independent attribution as a single source of truth. And among other things, we have API integrations with multiple traffic sources, including Facebook, Google, Bing, so we can help you with conversion postback, automatic cost updates across campaigns, ad sets every 15 minutes if you need, and of course running multiple accounts all in one interface. So, and this is it. As usual, we uh, try to keep it short and sweet. We again made it under 20 minute mark talking about uh, Facebook Pixel, Facebook Conversion API, and uh, posting data back to Facebook. So, with the content part done, it's now the question part. So, last time it was almost 30 minutes. Thank you very much. So, let's see how many questions about Facebook, ad tracking for Facebook, Facebook Pixels attribution changes and Facebook conversion API you have today. If you missed the live stream, you can always type your questions in comments. We'll get back and we'll answer those questions. So, any questions today? Yeah, I'm checking my hint here. I mean, I have quite a lot of people on the stream. Either uh, the topic of Facebook creation API is too cryptic or everything is very simple and transparent. So, how is for you? Is it cryptic? Is it transparent? Do you have any questions? Okay, why I wait for... Okay. So, uh, this, thank you for the question. Here we go. Um, well, what RedTrack does is it basically allows you to send events to Facebook outside using Pixel. 
And if you order those events, right, yes, Facebook will still prioritize on the events you will give highest priority to. So you need to decide whether you want to do purchase, I don't know, add to cart. Uh, they sometimes even recommend, okay, now we have poor attribution do landing page views. That is sort of funny, but uh, I've seen these comments. Uh, so, Anton, I hope this was the answer to your question. So we cannot do anything about uh, Facebook prioritization. We we'll just help you get those events back to Facebook. Is there an ability to communicate different events back to Facebook other than purchase to get lower CPM? Yes, with Red Track, now you can call the event whatever you want it to call. Want to call it purchase? Call it purchase. Want to collect all the events from all the conversion events in Red Track and send just to one event called lead in Facebook? You can do it. So we have two options. Default one, events will go to purchase. Uh, custom one, you give event a name and we'll send all events we collect for you from Facebook campaigns to this one event. Or you can just send all events you collect to Facebook, like leads, add to cart, purchase, etc. And then again, create this order of priority in your Facebook uh, pixel management, where we have, now we have event manager, so that Facebook picks the right one to optimize. And yes, I cannot confirm it. We never did experiments ourselves. We're not, as you know, we're not media buyers. We're more like a data company. But uh, there is a, like, a strong opinion that Facebook uh, gives lower CPM uh, for non-purchase uh, conversion events. Thank you very much. Uh, good question. Okay, uh, this is uh, how we think you will be able to slow it with Red Track. Because uh, all those new changes about domain user agents, Facebook gave uh, the alert last week. Facebook gave time uh, till February 15. So right now, we're working on changing our implementation Facebook Conversion API to allow you to set up those events. So basically, you have your own landing page and you care that you get more conversion. So you uh, verify the domain of your landing page. It's like domain plus one, so you can run multiple landing pages on the same domain. That's also fine. And then you send back events, call it lead, not purchase, call it whatever you want, as if they happened on your landing page. Of course, in reality, they are in your network like DFO Global, Digistore24, ClickBank, I don't know which one you use, but then they send you S to S postback. We attach it to Facebook Click and we send this information back to Facebook as if the conversion happened on your landing page. Boom. Should be working fine. I'll be honest, uh, since we have not implemented this uh, additional domain information that our customers can set up, that's our best guess we will be able to test it in a week and we welcome everybody to like reach back to us after February 15 and we'll be happy to do those experiments together. So hope uh, this answers your question. At the moment we see this as uh, the best option to bypass uh, the limitation of pixels not being called from advertiser pages and attributed to your account. And thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. Those are very, very good questions. And I hope everybody else who watches us right now or later in recording will find those useful because those are exactly the questions that are being asked. Yeah, we uh, can uh, set up multiple events collection and send it back to Facebook right now. That works out of the box, just we still have not made uh, our universal token pixel available publicly uh, through the interface. We uh, implement it ourselves, we'll give you the pixel to implement and help set up all the triggers. But uh, other than that, it works, it is available and uh, I'll be honest, quite a few retro users are already using it for some time. 
thank you uh, again good so let's keep it coming more questions please i mean uh it's such a hot topic on all the boards forums uh, groups uh, chats so we want to shed some light into it too Thank you. This is another great question. I think uh, that yes, you will still have to verify the domain. Uh, I have not uh, found uh, anything saying that you may not do this. But like I said with the previous question, uh, we are enhancing and like to meeting all the new requirements from Facebook with Conversion API when we'll do it will have a chance to test it live. Like, would Facebook require uh, to have domain verified as long as you send uh, this domain in the POSMIC? I think the whole idea is, yes, they want uh, to make cases when uh, advertiser can run multiple uh, affiliate pixels from his thank you page, impossible. I think this is the key reason why they do it. So everybody will move tracking uh, from advertisers page to regular uh, postbacks, use trackers like right track and will send their conversions back to Facebook themselves. At least what we see is happening with some of our users right now. But again, this is all very, very fresh. Uh, so when some time will pass, we'll see specific cases and we'll be able to provide the exact answers. Right now, I'll be honest, it's more like best guess based on uh, experience and publicly available knowledge. Thank you. Hi guys, uh, thank you. I'm not sure if it relates to Red Track, but let's give you a shout out. And Dobry uh, den. So thank you for joining us. Okay, so as usual, when questions stop going, we give a couple of minutes. I'll sit here, stare right in the camera and uh, wait for more questions. If not, uh, uh, I will I'll wait for questions. We uh, decided to do these streams not weekly, like we do it right now, but uh, be weekly. The reason is, uh, first, we'll have more time, because streaming is not what we do, uh, to better prepare and to find quality content, make some screenshots, and make those streams more enjoyable and informative. Okay, uh, let's see the question. This is the good one. No, it's even easier. So uh, you create a purchase event and you collect conversions that happened uh, in your affiliate network as if this was the purchase on your landing page and send it back to Facebook as if it happened on your landing page. Maybe even don't call it purchase, call it something else, the event you want to optimize to. Give it a random name, Facebook don't care. It will just pick this event, pick all the signals and will start to optimize towards people who trigger this event. So create an event, call it whatever you want, uh, collect all the conversions coming uh, from your affiliate networks into this event in Red Track and send it back to Facebook via Conversion API. This will work. And of course, put this event as the highest priority in your uh, event setup. Hope, I mean, I do hope this uh, explanation makes sense. And that's why we actually want those two weeks to prepare because uh, we would have time to 
uh, do this nice step by step diagram explaining how it can happen with all those uh, data being passed back and forth with the learning page, your affiliate network, Red Truck, and Facebook. Now we need to train our imagination, or you can schedule a call with us uh, later this week or next week. We will talk more about it. Yep, great that it makes sense. And I do hope this small workaround uh, with the domains will be a solution for all the affiliates. Yeah, of course. As with all the uh, conversion postbacks, you can pass both the event and uh, the value of the event. It's like probably somewhere in our stream. Let me check it. Yeah, conversion amount. Here you go. We, it's just that Facebook wants you to pass more data than all the other traffic sources, like conversion uh, user agent, source, event source URL. But key is ID. Yes, a Facebook click ID that you cannot collect easily, but we know a simple workaround for this. Event name, event time, amount, then user agents, action source, and event source. And this was the question. So yes, you can send uh, transaction value from Red Truck to Facebook and to Google, to Bing, and to probably most other traffic sources too. Surprise, we now have more people than in the beginning of the stream. So quite a few or guests might have missed the content part. So I hope that's okay. So we were talking about uh, Facebook, Facebook Pixel, Facebook Conversion API, and how to help all the media buyers and affiliates to go through these changes. Again, thank you everybody for questions, for wishes, for Dobry Den, and uh, let's uh, see if there is anything else we can help you with. Yeah, I'm just from time to time checking if there will be new questions. Uh, so you'll see my eyes going up and down, up and down to my screen and back. It is. It's available for three years now, but it's getting better and better with uh, each month. So. It is. You probably will find links in the video recording, but you can always go online. Uh, and where we have this, our details. Well, we have our Telegram channel because it's probably the content uh, stream that we do just to share our knowledge, our experience, and our viewpoints on what's going on in media buying and affiliate marketing. But I guess you can find Red Track, just Google us. Thank you. Um, thank you for watching the stream. And we're still here. We still have time. And uh, let's see if you have more questions. Okay. So. Uh, let's give some more time by uh, 35 minutes. Uh, okay, good. This is a very good question. Yeah, we have a place to specify pixel event as a part of setup. By default, we send uh, all events as purchase. That's somehow Facebook default setting. But you can give the name of the event we will send all the conversions to. Or if you track multiple conversions event to Red Track, you can just opt in to send all those conversions as different events to Facebook. 
just uh, please keep in mind that whatever you name those conversions in red track will send them exactly the same to facebook so you have uh not add to cart but add cart you have add to cart in facebook but add cart from red track so something to keep in mind and if you collect these events with pixel but we also send the same events from red track facebook promises it will do the proper deduplication of all the events because they will have different uh sort of event ids been passed from your pixel and from red track so facebook will see that yeah different events from the probably same user for the same click id so let's count just one surprise i mean even now we have uh, even more people than we had uh, 10 minutes ago so it's like we need to start the stream with uh some i don't know intro for 15 minutes and then proceed to the actual content no facebook said uh their attribution window is seven days now for all the new campaigns all old campaigns will be 28 days but as soon as you change something this becomes new campaign switches to seven days in facebook it will be seven days now in red track same campaigns you can have more than seven days of attribution probably way more if you need this it really depends and in red track you can switch between first click attribution last click attribution we even have this cross campaign multi-touch attribution report where we like mouthful the name we haven't found something more or simple to explain but amazing stuff shows you all conversions across all channels between first last and assisted clicks but that's in red track or in your other tracker facebook said seven days and uh, at the moment i don't think there is much you can do about it um well we don't show how to set this up because this is not the purpose of the live stream we, it's not a product demo but uh, you are always welcome to request a demo from our team and uh, we will be happy with all the changes we're making to the facebook creation api because new requirements are popping almost weekly the last one is like uh uh deadline is february 15 but we mentioned so when we think that yeah this is sort of looks like a final setup it's not uh, going to change much then we'll record the demo video we'll of course share it uh, online on our youtube channel facebook in our knowledge base and uh, you will be able to see how it works for now interim we have quite detailed setup article in our knowledge base that you can access from your RedTrack account or just type docs.redtrack.io and you'll get access to our knowledge base and see the instructions. They are fairly easy and straightforward. Exactly. So you can have a uh, one event uh for call to action button click and call it for example i don't add to cart and then the other event that happens outside the landing page uh in your affiliate network call it leader purchase and store this as two separate events and send them as separate events to facebook and build your optimization across uh those two different events so yes you can do this and so this may be a very good uh, approach to improve your uh, Facebook results because you may end up having way more add to cart. That's when somebody clicks call to action button called CTA, whatever you want to call it, then purchases. And the attribution window for call to actions will definitely be within uh, seven days. And again, uh, 
I really appreciate everybody uh, coming here today and asking those questions. I said this before, I'll say it again. They are very good. This is something we hear from our customers often, but it's kind of hard to find the way to share them publicly. But this stream is a chance for you to ask these questions and for us to answer them and share them for everybody else. Yeah, uh, affiliate network will send you, uh, okay, yeah, I hear what you So basically by call to action, I meant that somebody clicked the link on the page uh, that sent them to the affiliate network. Your landing page call to action links. Now, of course, uh, your affiliate network can send you more than one conversion event if uh, they support it. Like uh, our customers who is our publisher panel, we give them an opportunity to create multiple conversion events and send those events back to their publishers, including Add to Cart, because that's indeed a really valuable optimization event for all the media buying activities. So ask a network. If they can send you more events from the backend, it means we can collect more events for you and send more events back to Facebook. But well, this one is really good. Uh, yeah. Uh, we may want to talk to a couple of our affiliate network partners about this uh, call to additional call to action events like add to cart. With right track again, it's not like a separate post pack. It's more like you need to send event type. So this is add to cart and send it back to like event type equals add to cart. And for and for purchase, you send event type equals purchase. So it's two post packs, but can be used as a global post pack. Yeah, uh, true. We have a good working contact with Digistore. And uh, uh, we, uh, whenever we have uh, any setup questions, we can actually uh, contact Digistore independently of you and ask their help for setup. And we do the same if the uh, affiliates ask Digistore about using Red Track, they reach out to us directly and we help with the setup. This uh, typically works in favor for both Red Track users and Digistore affiliates because we have very good. Uh, communication between two companies allowing to synchronize uh, activities and have fast information exchange without bypassing all those email requests, account managers, all this stuff. So yeah, this is good. Sorry, I, I probably not, have not shown this question. Wonderful. So uh, we are about to get to the same additional 25 minutes of questions. Thank you very much. and really really good questions uh, i hope all the other viewers outside of the stream will enjoy uh seeing this in record and maybe type more questions in comments and sometimes i'm really anxious to wait to see okay is it like time to shut down or there will be more questions and uh, today probably you uh, surprised me three times i was ready to hit this and broadcast button and boom the question will pop up so let's give another try right now welcome Okay, so it's sort of difficult for me to sit silently. <laughs> uh, like I think uh, we still have this stream show, something should go on. Uh, no more questions. I see time like ticking out. We have 10 seconds left till uh, 45 minutes runtime. And out of 13 
10, 13 streams we did uh, from the start. Those will be three uh, longest streams we had, 45 minutes. And we have even more people than in the middle of the stream surprise. So uh, for all the guests, well, uh, that's one uh, this year, Red Track only, and I just uh, can't tell the whole story of logistics that we had to collect them and send to all Red Track team because we have people in one, two, three, four, five, six countries by now working remotely. Uh, but uh, this sort of Christmas present. But I think we will find a way to get those switch shirts when uh, the logistics will be easier. And it's what I mean, it's extremely warm. So that's why I probably wait for streams and for the cold weather that we have right now here locally. Good. So, <laughs> and uh, Thank you uh, very much uh, for your attention, for your time, for being with uh, us on the stream today. Uh, next time we will take a break for two weeks. We'll work on uh, solid content talking about, uh, again, Google Privacy Sandbox in more detail as information starts to pop up everywhere from wide to IAB Europe. We'll think what we can do to prepare to make it meaningful some nice diagram diagrams and uh, see you again in two weeks thank you hope you enjoyed the show and leave more comments and likes uh whatever platform you're watching this on have a great day or evening or maybe morning bye